Welcome to TechSoup Talks. Today's webinar is Collaborate with Wikis. My name is Cami Griffiths, and I'd like to welcome presenters um, who have agreed to help make this webinar possible. We've got uh, three folks available. We've got David Beal, Beth Stettlinger, and Sarah Cove. So I'd like to have each of them introduce themselves, and then um, I will uh, take a quick poll. So David, I'd like you to um, please tell us a little bit about your work and, and how, uh, a little bit about your nonprofit. Sorry about that. I had to mute and unmute all the phones, so we have a little technical difficulty. Hold on one second. Hello? Okay. Right, go ahead. All right. Sorry about that. Uh, again, my name is David Deal. I am the Executive Director of SF Revival and the co-founder of SFHomeless.net, which is a wiki based in San Francisco uh, hosting homeless resources. Uh, we have uh, lots of users in the community, who uh, social workers, nonprofits, government, who use our wiki to help serve their clients and um, uh, get all sorts of information on hundreds of uh, homeless service providers in San Francisco. Great. Thank you, David. And um, Beth, can you introduce yourself, please? Sorry, we can't hear you. Can you try that again? Do you hear me now? Yes, perfect. Sorry about that. Go ahead. All right. That's okay. My name is Beth Duttlinger, and I'm a library development consultant at the Alliance Library System in East Peoria, Illinois. And um, I'm very interested in Web 2.0 technology and the use of these tools to support instruction. So I'm very happy to be having this opportunity to talk a little bit about our wiki, which is called Technology Training Wheel. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Beth. And Sarah Cole, can you please introduce yourself? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Um, I'm Sarah from Wikispaces. Uh, we are a wiki hosting company that serves education, nonprofits, and businesses. Um, and I am marketing manager at Wikispaces, which means that I spend a lot of time in contact with the Wikispaces community and trying to help people build simpler, more useful uh, wikis um, for them for their organizations. So I'm here yeah. and excited to, to help out. Fantastic. So thank you all for uh, presenting today. And I also want to uh, give a little shout out to my coworker Becky Weekend, who is answering questions about ReadyTalk and TechSoup, and also Sarah Manley, who is from Wikia. She is also answering any um, specific Wiki questions that you have while the presentation is going on. And before we get started with the agenda, I would like to take a quick poll. Um, if you all would take a second to read through this and select the one that's most applicable to you, I think you're only able to, to click on one. So how are you currently using wikis? I'm not sure what a wiki is. I only read Wikipedia. I contribute to other people's wikis. I am considering using one. We have one. I don't know how it works. I created one, but it's not active. We have one and use it every day. So I'm going to give you guys a few more seconds. To submit, I see there's about 50 more people to submit. This is kind of fun. All right, so I'm going to um, skip to results and look. I'm considering using one. Nearly half of the group. So thank you all for submitting that. I, it's nice for us to see kind of who's in the audience and uh, and where people are at. Uh, we've got a lot of a range of folks out there. So thanks again for attending. So here is the agenda. We are going to talk quickly about what a wiki is, how they are being used, some of the different tools available, what you need to go through to create and maintain a wiki, um, talk about training, and then share some resources with you. So the first question goes out to Sarah. Let's start by defining what a wiki is and what the benefits are, and how it differs from other online collaborative tools. Sure. Um, so a wiki in very simple terms is a web page with an edit button. Uh, so previously what would happen on the web is if you went to a web page, you could read the content, but you couldn't actually uh, add to it easily. You'd have to know HTML and CSS, or you'd have to have access to the website servers to add content. What a wiki did was it, it broke down this technical barrier and allowed anyone, regardless of their technical background, to edit and add content to the wiki. And a wiki is very simple to use. Uh, all you have to do is go to the wiki, 
and go up to this Edit button right up here. And when you click on it, the wiki is turned into something that looks very similar to a Word document. Here you can add text right here just by typing in text. You can format the text. You can add links, add images and files, add videos and other uh, media onto your site, and more. And as soon as you sort of added what you said, you've typed it here, all you have to do is click Save, and the wiki is turned back again into a website that anyone can view. So um, because of this, um, a wiki is a really great tool for collaboration. Uh, a lot of people can come to your wiki, they can edit pages, and they can help build content together with others. So imagine using it for planning a conference. You can all post different uh, the agenda of the conference, keynote speakers can type what they are going to be talking about, etc. You can also use a wiki to share best practices with colleagues from around the world. Um, another benefit to using a wiki is that it allows anyone to bring together resources from all over the world and compi compile them in a central place. So this would include images, files, and widgets. Now, widgets are really pretty cool, and I definitely encourage you to check them out if you uh, set up your own wiki. Uh, what a widget is, is it's a piece of code that allows you to take an application that's out there on the Internet, such as YouTube or Flickr, and it embed it directly into your wiki. So you would go to your wiki, and you can actually watch the videos, you can hear podcasts, you can chat with others, you can scroll through documents and more directly on your wiki. There are thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of widgets out there on the Internet, and a wiki is a really great place to bring them all together in one, one place. Um, so to recap, uh, some of the benefits of using a wiki are that it's uh, simple to publish to the web. You can easily edit, type, and save. You can bring together a lot of different people to collaborate on documents, events, etc. And you can bring together all these different resources and tools from across the Internet. Um, these are sort of the main things that set uh, it apart from other tools out there that are out there. Um, you can store this information over time. So over time, people can actually see this conference, all this material that's brought together through this collaborative process, and the wiki will be there for people to refer to. Um, and so that's uh, something a little bit about wikis to get you started. Great. Thanks, Sarah. Now we're going to move to David. And David, can you tell us about your wiki and how it's being used? Uh, can you hear me? Okay, good. Yes, we can. Um, yeah, this, uh, this first slide, you can see the uh, main page of sfhomeless.net. And like I said before, it's a wiki of homeless resources serving the population of San Francisco. Um, this is just the top of the page, but the page continues on for quite a bit, uh, providing all sorts of general information for the community, which I'll talk about later. And the next slide. Okay, there you go. Um, I've also included a slide for LA's Homeless Wiki, lahomeless.org. You can see the style differences from uh, San Francisco. They pretty much serve the same purpose, however. On the next slide, um, as if homeless.net was originally formed to store a large homeless service resource manual on the Internet, the manual came from the San Francisco Bar Association's Volunteer Legal Service Program Homeless Advocacy Project. <laughs> yeah, it's a mouthful, but they call it HAP, H-A-P, the HAP Manual. Now, the manual is a large binder with 600 pages, 700 agencies, and 45 chapters of uh, categories of service. Uh, before the wiki, people would just have to buy yearly editions of the HAP Manual and make notes whenever there were changes to agencies or services. Um, <clears throat> looking at uh, bullet number one there, um, converting the manual. We followed the same process in LA as we did for San Francisco. We took existing uh, resource manuals and turned the agencies uh, listed in the manuals, turned them into wiki pages. And uh, then we took the services and assigned those as categories. And I'll talk more about categories later on. Um, but any person who, with Internet access can search our wiki by agency or category and uh, also use uh, several helpful menus of templates and, uh, and find services for whatever they're looking for. Um, the next couple of bullets on this slide, um, even though the name of the wiki sounds like only the homeless are using it, we believe the wiki is actually being used mostly by caseworkers serving the homeless population in San Francisco. We get over 1,000 hits a day, and those hits are much more popular during the weekday, which leads us to think that professional people are using it. That plus the testimonies from caseworkers saying they use it all the time as their resource. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Um, when designing the main page, uh, I decided to post information uh, that I found from different major stakeholders 
and create community boxes. You can see on the slide the little green box there. That's one of the community agencies that um, uh, participates, uh, the San Francisco Home Service Provider Network. And uh, by creating a, uh, all these uh, different boxes on the main page, um, we would update those boxes with meeting dates and other news that people would be interested in. And thus a tangible sense of the community was formed just by the inclusion of all the major stakeholders in their news. That was something that was kind of unexpected you know, from just having a manual to actually creating a sense of community by this web, uh, website. And um, if you look on the next slide here, um, these are another example. This is still on the main page of SFHomeless.net. Each of these colored boxes represents a different major stakeholder. And so each of these boxes you know, like has meeting information and links to their main web page or, or news. And, um, and as I mentioned in the introduction, uh, we have a large variety of stakeholders using the wiki, nonprofits, social workers, government employees, and members of the public just trying to learn about homeless resources. And the last slide um, for categories, I just want to quickly uh, go over this very fast because it's, it's something very important about the power of wiki, and it's also something that people may not grasp right away. Um, whenever I do my trainings, I like to like, you know, use something, an example from Wikipedia. I mean, well, I think a lot of people have used Wikipedia. And if you ever look at the bottom of Wikipedia, they always have like different categories that they use to associate that. And the example I use in my training is the Wizard of Oz. If you ever look at the Wizard of Oz on Wikipedia, and you look down at the bottom of the, of the page, you'll see the category that it's a 1939 film. It's a film set in Kansas. It's a Judy Garland film. But if you click on the category 1939 film, you get to see a list of all the other movies made in that year, not just the Wizard of Oz. So those different film pages would have their own unique set of categories that include 1939 film, but not necessarily film set in Kansas. So bringing that back to SFMS.net, when we create a page for each agency providing any kind of service for the homeless, we then look at what kind of service that agency provides and then add that service as a category to their agency page, such as dental services or food or veterans or housing. So when someone is looking for a service, they can click on that category and see all the agencies that provide that service. And so when new agencies are discovered or when established agencies cut their services or close, the wiki then can reflect the change the second someone takes the time to update it. And that's, um, that's all I have for that. Excellent. Thanks, David. Now I'd like to uh, shoot this question over to Beth. Can you tell us about Technology Training Wheels? Yes. Um, we created Technology Training Wheels, which is our wiki, and we also call it TTW, um, to meet the needs of our library system. And I know there are people attending the session from all over the country, so I just wanted to give a little information first about the Alliance Library System. ALS is in East Peoria and is one of nine regional library systems in the state of Illinois. We provide services for over 250 libraries of all types. And you'll notice in the map, it is a very large area. We cover parts of 31 counties, over 14,000 square miles. Um, the majority of our membership is made up of public libraries. We have over 100 public libraries. And then we also have over 100 school libraries. But we also include special libraries and academic libraries to complete those multi-type categories. In 2008, we did a survey of our membership which identified technology as the number one training um, need of the system. So this led the develop to the development of technology training wheels. And you'll notice, let me see if I can do this. Yeah, here we go. I do have the address just right up here at the top of the page. So it's technologytrainingwheels.pbworks.com. And um, it's a web-based pathfinder that focuses on new technologies, things like social bookmarking sites, Twitter, blogs, wikis, um, those kind of newer technologies. But we really focused on how these are applicable in libraries. And we modeled our technology training wheels after Learning 2.0. Learning 2.0 was created in 2006 as an exploration and discovery tool by Helen Blowers of the Public Library of Charlotte Mecklenburg County, where participants um, completed 23 things um, to uh, um, learn about technology. She used Blogger to get the information out there. And Learning 2.0 is often referred to as 23 things because that was the key component of it. And it's been adapted by over 400 libraries since that time. But we chose to use a wiki rather than a blog 
um, for a variety of different reasons. Um, for one, the wiki is very easy to use. It didn't require any kind of workarounds that we felt that we needed to do with a blog. Blogs are very customizable, but we felt like we were having to do so much that we, we just wanted something that we could get out of the box and ready to go. Um, wiki seemed better suited for our goals of building that bo body of knowledge. Um, we didn't want to do the play and discover like in 23 things and just have brief entries, which is good for a blog. We wanted to have assistive exploration, so it was heavy on content. Um, and because of the collaborative nature of our project, we allow only the five members of the consulting team to create the modules. Um, we like that wiki format. So it allowed us to collaborate, but we also had control over other people who wanted to um, add to that. We could block that off. We wanted technology training wheels to be modular and Internet accessible. Um, because we had problems with traffic, travel and staffing issues of, that mem many of our members face. We didn't want them to have to come to the system. We wanted to be able to have them um, do this anywhere at any time. And we also needed to be able to design it to accommodate short co time commitments. And with all those, um, as Sarah was talking about, all of the widgets that are available in a wiki, it just worked very well with that format. And finally, we needed to be able to accommodate easy edits. Um, blog posts are traditionally, the etiquette is that you don't edit the posts once they're placed. So we needed to be able to update and add to the modules as information changes. So um, that wiki format worked very well for us and was very conducive to this style. So in January of 2009, we launched Technology Training Wheels, our wiki, and since then we've added a new module every month. So we have about 16 modules that are now available. Fantastic. Thanks for giving us an overview. And I've checked out their site, and it's really great. So much really great information for technology training. I want to turn this over to Sarah. Uh, we've heard from David. His wiki is on Wikia and Best, which is using PBWorks. So can you tell us about Wikispaces and give an overview of the different tools available? Sure. Um, so first I want to say that uh, if you all lo are looking at wikis, um, and you'll see from this presentation, there are a lot of wiki companies out there, and some of them might suit your needs better than others. So I encourage you to test out a few before settling on one. Um, in terms of wiki spaces, our wiki is designed with those who have little or no technical experience in mind. We try to make it as simple as possible so that people can spend more time actually doing their work and less time trying to figure out how to use a tool. Um, we also pr work to provide excellent customer support for our, our users. Um, we're available if you have any questions, and we tend to respond to emails within 24 hours or less. Uh, again, this is so that you can spend less time struggling with the tool and more time actually getting, getting work done. So we're available for that. Uh, the other thing that sets us apart from some wiki companies is our private label service uh, for organizations. Uh, with a private label, you get a completely separate wiki environment for your nonprofit in which you can create an unlimited number of users and, and wikis uh, for all your different working groups. So if you, let's say you're a global nonprofit um, and you want to create a wiki for each regional office, you can do that. You can also have a wiki for the headquarter where they share information. Uh, and then you can also have best practices wikis where everyone collaborates and learns from one another. And then all of these wikis would be on your own controlled site, and you would be able to administer them centrally. So if you want to learn more information about that service, you can visit the link on this page. Um, in terms of features, uh, Wikispaces has a WYSIWYG wiki editor. This is the editor that allows you to, when you edit a page, the wiki appears like a Word document. Uh, we also allow you to customize your site, and we allow for easy wiki management, so you can easily delete pages and uh, add members, remove members, etc. Um, finally, I wanted to mention the Wikispaces TechSoup discount. Um, we offer a te discount through TechSoup for, TechSoup for nonprofit organizations. Um, what we do is we give away a year subscription on our PLUS plan, which is usually $50 a year, uh, for free to anyone who signs up through TechSoup. Um, I believe that there is a $10 administration fee, um, but if you are interested, you can sign up at the link on this page. So that is a little bit about Wikispaces for nonprofits. We've also created this chart, and I apologize for the text being so small, but you will be getting a copy of the PowerPoint after this, and you can look, in this, look into this further. Uh, but this is some of the 
um, more commonly used wikis that are out there and some of the, the prices and the features. And up at the top of the slide you can see there is a link to um, some articles that have more information. There, is, there are quite a few options out there, so try not to get uh, take it easy as you start to do your research. I want to now talk to David. And um, what was your process for setting up your wiki, and how many hours a month does it take to maintain? Um, thank you. Um, well, um, I will get to that. Um, the, the number of hours depends on how many users and administrators are actually active on the site, and like how many changes. So it really varies. Uh, my own personal involvement is maybe uh, five hours uh, a week. And, but everybody else's involvement on administ administrating the site is probably about the same. Um, but uh, on, the, on the slide here that we're looking at right here, uh, the main page again, I wanted to bring people's attention to um, the ads that are on here. Uh, when I uh, decided to pick Wikia as the uh, hosting, it was very important that, uh, that there not be any cost involved because I wasn't sure how successful the, the wiki would be, and, and I didn't have a lot of money. So they had um, uh, hosting where they would actually you know, give you all the services for free and then uh, run these little Google ads. So um, if, if I don't have the, uh, the cursor, the, the little green thing. But if you kind of look at the uh, – there's a little rainbow. Oh, there you go. Perfect. The arrow is now pointing at the little text ads. And those don't appear on every page, just on some of the pages. Um, but that's how the wiki is actually being paid for. Um, going to the, uh, the next slide here. There we go. Um, back in 2006 when I set up SFOMOS.net, um, I was looking at other uh, wiki hosts. Um, again, some were charging money and some weren't charging money. And, uh, and it was a concern of mine that uh, I had better build the wiki on a network uh, where I can be sure all the effort by the people and the thousands of hours of input that you know, possibly could be going into this weren't going to be you know, deleted should the company go out of business. And so again, um, as Sarah was saying, you have to do your research to make sure that you know, if you do pick a, a host, you know, don't pick the one with the best price or you know, the one with the, you know, the, the flashiest you know, offer. You, know, you need to make sure that you know, it's a reputable company because you, know, you are sort of putting your reputation out there saying, you know, hey, everybody, if you contribute to this, you know, it's going to be around you know, one year, two years, five years from now. Um, so you know, that was some, some of the research that I did. Um, uh, that, that's also going there on the second bullet there. You know, is the host going to be around two years or five years from now? Um, another important consideration uh, when you're picking a wiki uh, host is uh, the community services and wiki ownership. Um, the actual content of the wiki is determined by something called a Creative Commons license. And I won't go into all the details about that, but there's an entire open source, open content philosophy um, you know, Flickr has uh, some of these um, uh, licenses, and um, you have to you know, decide what kind of license is your information going to be operating under. And at Wikia, um, I believe that the, the ownership is kind of you know, it's, it's under a Creative Commons license where you know, nobody really owns it, but you know, Wikia is responsible for the, for the site. And I personally didn't want to be you know, the owner of the site you know, for various reasons because SFMOS.net is a public wiki. And I'm trying to encourage the community to express an ownership. So if I get in there and I'm the owner saying, you know, do this, do that, delete that, then you know it could like discourage people from the community ownership aspect. So um, <clears throat> uh, let's see. The uh, the community services are also important um, because you might be familiar with you know in the news every now and then something comes up where somebody writes something on a Wikipedia page. You know they say that you know some famous person has some sort of like alleged problem, and then somebody comes on there and deletes it, and then they say, oh, but it's true, but it's not true. You know, that has the potential of you know, coming up in a public wiki. Um, we haven't had that problem really with SFMLS.net, but the problem exists. And so um, at our host, Wikia, I mean, they have you know, community managers. In fact, you know, Sarah Manley who is on the phone right now is one of those managers. And you know, they will take the ultimate responsibility in sort of helping to negotiate like, what is the best way to um, post information. And there is, like I said, a, an entire philosophy behind you know, what is uh, open knowledge and open content. And uh, it's important, it was important for SFOMOS.net that we sort of attach ourselves to that philosophy in order to um, give credibility to the site. And again, you know, selfishly I, I wanted to sort of take away you know, any finger pointing at me. And, uh, and uh, let's see, under the 
on to the next slide. Uh, the maintenance, just really quickly, uh, I just wanted to bring up some of the, uh, the maintenance issues. Um, there are three basic users uh, on a wiki. Um, the bureaucrat is usually you know, one of the founders. It's somebody who can turn other users into administrators. An administrator is somebody who can revert pages back to a previous version in case of error or vandalism. An administrator can also block users or block IP addresses. And a basic user, um, it's kind of a misleading name because a basic user has a lot of power. In the wiki world, um, users can go in there, create pages, edit pages. Um, they don't really delete pages, but they can you know, delete content off of pages. And if you look at this slide, um, you'll see the history of a page. This is really, really uh, important uh, in understanding wikis, is that when a, when a page is changed, a page is, a page is not deleted. It's just a new version is created based on the recent changes. So this allows anyone to compare versions to each other or roll back a page to a previous configuration, whether it's one edit ago or 20 edits ago. So you can actually say, hey, you know, you know, hopefully the print isn't too small, but if you wanted to see the change that I made on May 3rd to this particular page, you, know, you just sort of like, you know, select the bullet and then compare it to whatever. And then by, by, by saying compare the selected revision, you'll actually see that part of the page that was changed. And that's a really great thing uh, when you're doing either security or just tracking the history of a page. And, uh, and the system keeps track of who made that change based on either your user ID when you're logged in or an IP address if it's done anonymously. So uh, whenever there's widespread vandalism, which again I said has never been a problem on SFOMOS.net, but if there ever was a problem, you could back out those changes like in a matter of seconds like it took the vandal like 20 minutes to like you know vandalize 50 pages, but then you could like back them all out in like 10 seconds based on you know their IP address, which has been tracked system wide. And um, that's it. Excellent. Thank you, David, for going over that. I know there's been quite a few questions in the chat specifically about this topic. So uh, to to quickly reiterate before going on to the next question, this shows you all of the edits. Um, you can see the current and the previous view, and you can undo it. You can leave messages for the person who, who submitted that. So um, if we don't have time to address all the questions related to this, know that we are already thinking about a next level webinar to go in deeper into kind of the administ administrative rights. Um, on to Beth. Your wiki is different than David since you don't allow others to contribute. You have five total contributors. So in, in a way you're using it like a website. Can you, can you tell us about the development process? Oh, sure. Uh, and I do want to talk a little bit about why we chose PBWorks because I know David was talking about why he had chosen the wiki product that they had done. Um, we had chosen PBWorks, and it used to be called PBWiki, was because of the educational slant of it. We do a lot of continuing education in our department. Um, we do a lot of training, and this is technology training wheels, so we wanted to keep that educational um, feel to it. Also, it's free. Um, PBWorks gives out, allows a very large capacity of free um, wikis out there, and there are no ads which we, we also like. And it had been around as PBWiki before for, for a long time. I mean several years. I had used it at my previous position which was over two years ago. So it, it had been around for a while. It's very easy to use, free, no ads. That's why we had chosen PBWorks. Um, and to talk a little bit about that developmental process, because of the collaborative nature of Technology Training Wheels, um, we have those five consultant members who have we've granted them all the administrative access. So someone had mentioned something about, you know, can you grant them administrative rights like you do on Facebook? Yes, it's very easy to do. It's pretty much the same thing. You just kind of click, click, and they have, have those rights. Um, whenever anybody requests rights, I get an email notice so I can go in and then see is this somebody that um, is just trying to find information about it or is this somebody that I can identify from one of our member libraries or where that information is. And then I respond to that person individually. So it's nice to be able to get those monitoring. Um, you'll notice that our technology training wheels, we're constantly updating it. Um, and we had really because the five consultants are, are the ones who are apply, uh, 
putting out that content, there's, there's a reason for that. We wanted control of the content, and we wanted consistency of the modules. Um, and especially with, we offer CTDU units, which are continuing, continuing developing development union, units for our um, teachers and academics in the state of Illinois, or schools in the state of Illinois. Um, and they have learning objectives. And it's, uh, there's this process that goes along with it. So we wanted a certain kind of a template for our modules to follow, and that's why it's closed to other people. Um, we also like the idea of the wiki versus a website. I know that was a question that, that somebody else had had because of that aspect of control. At some institutions, getting permission to edit the website can be more difficult than, obt than obtaining top-level government security clearance. Um, in some places, there's chains of commands that you have to go through, delays, training. And then if something changes during the process, you might have to start all over again. Um, so once you have um, your wiki, what you can do is work with the person who is doing the website or while you're in the whole process so that the website controls are still with the webmaster and they don't have to worry about you wrecking havoc on their cascading style sheets. But you still have the ability to add, refine, and redesign your wiki content in a very short time frame. Um, we've started to work more collaboratively with our membership on the modules, but as of yet, the wiki is not more open. But as we continue to innovate and try new things, so like, like I would mentioned, it's only been around for a little over a year, um, we may, uh, for the sustainability, open it up to other people. But we'll see as we get there. It might be more of a limited thing and not just somebody who requests to put that information. It might be just we're working with certain librarians to build content. Great. Thank you, Beth. Now this question goes to Sarah, what guidance would you give someone interested in starting to use a wiki? Um, so there are, to begin, there are a lot of different organizations out there, different types of organizations, and some things will work better for some than others. But uh, just sort of some general tips uh, that might work in general is um, I started by saying that you should really you should start small. Uh, begin with a small event or small project that you need to organize. Uh, don't begin with the goal of we're going to now do everything in our organization on wikis. Um, instead, plan a concrete event or project, such as an annual conference or a holiday party, and then use that event as a way to post information about the event on it. So if you're planning a conference, set up the registration, set up the lodging, set up the keynote, spe keynote speakers, all the information on your wiki, and make the wiki the central resource for that event. So it becomes a very concrete thing that people can go to. Uh, another thing is to have a wiki evangelizer in your organization. So you want to make sure that there's someone there who is going to manage the wiki, who's going to monitor any of the content that's being added, and is going to encourage people to actually use the wiki. Uh, another thing that I've found as I've looked at people using wikis is it's important to let people make mistakes and to let them correct each other. So an advantage to a wiki is that anything can be, that is done on the wiki can be undone. As David was saying, you can revert changes very easily on the wiki. So if someone deletes all of the content of the page and then types something incorrect, you can go in and revert the page to a previous version, or you can actually go in and edit the content yourself. So uh, if people know that they can actually go in and aren't afraid to make mistakes because they know that they can't actually destroy anything, then they're le less timid to get involved. So that's one thing. Uh, another thing is to make sure that when you, as you begin to give people concrete tasks on the wiki. So if it's something that they can easily do and complete, uh, such as if you're planning the conference, you want everyone who's going to be a part of the conference to update their profile information on the, on the wiki. So have them go into their page, give them specific instructions about what they should do and what they should fill in. And once they are able to complete that, uh, it's a more rewarding experience. Um, I found that it's, it's harder for people if you just say, you know, here's our wiki, go ahead and jump in and begin working on it. Uh, people don't know where to begin. They don't know what they can do and, um, or what they should do on the wiki. But if you have a concrete task, you can give them a sense of accomplishment and success when they first begin, and then they're more likely to come back. So those are some, some general tips for, for getting started with a wiki. Thank you. And I know that our other two presenters have some things they'd like to add. So I'd like to start with David. 
if you have some things you'd like to add about where, what advice you'd give to uh, Wiki newbies. Um, well, um, our particular uh, you know, founding of, of SFOMOS.net was really based upon you know, necessity. You know, necessity being the mother of invention. And we, we founded it three and a half years ago. And I think there were only just a handful of, of Wiki hosts even at that time. So it was very new to us. And uh, we were thinking like we want to put this manual on the Internet that everyone is using. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure there are situations like that all over the world you know, where everybody is sort of dealing with these early editions of this voluminous thing that they have to deal with. And, and everyone's had the thought, oh, we should put this on the Internet. And then you start to think, okay, is it going to be an access database? You know, how, is, how are the changes going to be done? And I, I really believe that, that Wiki is a really great technology for this, you know, uh, for this, for this generation because you know, the more we thought about, okay, if we have a database, then we have to have a database you know, programmer, and then there are going to be changes, and then there's that whole hierarchy of how do changes get made. And uh, even in the homeless resource field, you know, there are a lot of um, databases out there that are kind of using that format. And, and I just I look at them and I think, okay, you know, time to get on the wiki bandwagon. So you know, I think for newbies, you have to start you know, kind of thinking ahead and thinking, you know, don't feel that you're tied down to old technologies. You, know, you have to do the research. You have to sort of do the, you know, kind of like listen to people, you know, attend you know, webinars like this, you know, read up on it, you know, talk to people, and, you know, and just you know, jump right in. And um, you know, it's, it's tough at first. You know, people have a learning curve. Whenever I go to trainings, you know, you probably even online, there are people who have never heard of Wikipedia or, or used Wikipedia. I mean, there are people out there like that. And you know, it's, you know, you gotta, when I get on there, it's like you know, the, the sixth most popular website in the world, and you know, people love it. And you know, once you expose yourself to the new technology, you, know, you may find that it's you know, indispensable. It's going to be part of your life. Great. Thank you so much. And Beth, did you have anything you'd like to add? Yes, actually I'd like to add a little bit to that first point um, um, that Sarah had made about starting small. But even starting small, be sure that you're articulating the purpose and the goals in that development stage before you actually use it. Technology is a tool. Um, and keeping that in mind, don't use technology for technology's sake, but have good ideas of what you want to use it for. And by starting small, we had started with technology training wheels, and we had gradually built the body of knowledge. We, you don't have to create Rome in a day. Um, you can work over time and having that content and going back. And um, having a project manager when she was talking about um, evangelizing it is also important to have someone who's you know, responsible for monitoring or initiating or innovating um, to keep that very active is also important. You don't want to languish in some kind of wiki dead zone. Um, you want to keep making it um, to better to meet the needs of your audience. Fantastic. Well, we have a large quantity of questions. So I'm going to launch right into questions. and. Um, I'm going to focus this one, or I'm going to send this one first to um, Sarah, and then if other presenters have anything to add, please um, let me know after she's done speaking. And lots of people wondering about security and if wikis are secure and HIPAA compliant. Uh, yeah, so probably the variety, most of the wiki uh, services you have out there will be secure. Um, they are going to be following the internet standards of the time. You'll be able to, um, if you have SSL. Um, you'll be able to send the information securely to and from your computer to the servers. So there's a lot of, uh, I think a lot of wiki companies right now do have very secure, secure services. Um, if you host your wiki in-house, you can also host it on your own server. So I think both um, hosted wikis and in-house in uh, wikis are, are secure. Um, and if you have questions, you can always check with the specific wiki company you're looking at and uh, ask about their security, their security options. Great. And other questions had to do with, are there plugins that people can use on their sites that can uh, drive them to the wiki or to their Facebook? Or can, can, um, and I'm not sure who to send this, uh, this out to, so maybe I'll just start with Beth. 
Um, is this something that you've used? Uh, any kind of plugins to drive people to different parts of your um, your website or your Facebook page? Um, we direct them to a lot of different pages. Is that what you mean? I guess I'm not clear of the question that you're asking. I think people are looking for, as Sarah had mentioned earlier, the widgets that you can bring in applications to do different things. Um, and if there are some things similar that you can place like a badge on your website that can draw people to, to your wiki. Well, we use a lot of embedded videos. Um, it's very easy to do. We use a lot of illustrations. Um, uh, we do a lot of PDF files um, that we link to that we've created. Um, just lots of content. I'm surprised at how easy it is to drop them in. So the, the, the widgets are very easy to use in PBWorks. I've also done some things with, we have several different um, wikis and blogs that we have through the Alliance Library System. And if people are interested, it's www.alliancelibrarysystem.com. And we've used wet paint and Wikispaces and Wikidot. And most of them seem very easy. Some of the wet paint things, because of it's more of a combination of a blog, it's not as, as I think, as easy to embed things as um, the one that I use most often, which is Wiki. PB works. Sorry. <laughs> um, and Sarah, did you have any anything that you know of, like any widgets or um, plugins that people can use on their sites? Is that a vendor specific thing? Um, it, it may be vendor specific. If you're looking to, let's say, you have a Facebook page or you have a website and you want to link people to your wiki, uh, you can do that fairly easily. Um, I know Wikispaces has badges you can put on on those things and draw people in. Um, and you also should be able to add widgets fairly easily. I mean, it will depend on the vendor, um, but I think I'd imagine that most wiki companies uh, realize the importance of this for people, and and will have some sort of tool to to make this available for them. Great. Hello. Yeah. You know, um, one of the things I, I didn't mention in my uh, you know uh, maintenance issue was, or in my setup issue was that when I first got started, and I knew I, I knew a little HTML, but I certainly didn't know how to like set up the wiki or set up those colored boxes. And what I did was I actually went and I looked at dozens and dozens of wikis. I mean, I, I actually went on to, you know, Wikia's you know directory and just kind of found out who was the most popular wiki, and you know they they were probably spending the time to fancy up their site. And so you can, you there's something where you can actually like where it says edit this page, or you, it'll actually say you know view source code if the, if the page is protected. So that way you can actually look at the code behind the um, you know the, the actual you know front of the page. And, and if you see something on there that you like, you can just you know, view the source and then copy it into your own site. And, uh, and they even have something called a sandbox. I, mean, I think that's, that's a, a term that's used across all wiki hosts. But it's a place where it's kind of assumed that people are always going to be like experimenting with code, you know, playing with stuff, you know, trying out different colors, whatever. And uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's how programmers get by. I mean, it's, it's like one of the secrets of programming is you know, you can actually go and steal code from <laughs> not stealing, but it's like everybody does it. You just kind of look to see what you like, and then incorporate it into your own site. Right. That's just one of the secrets. And, yeah, and David, I, I like the fact that you brought up that you can see code um, because that's one of the things that I liked about PB Works is um, people who don't know HTML they don't have to worry about it. It looks like a a document that's just a a Word document, but if you um, you can click on the source and you can see the HTML, so it's very easy then to change the code for people who do have those skills. Thank you. And I'm going to move on to a different question and point this one to David because um, he had talked about being sensitive to the longevity of the, of the tool. What, how is it easy to export the content in order to import it into another tool? Or how can you move your data around if you need to? You know, I know that exists. I mean, I've heard about it. I've sort of asked about it, uh, you know, kind of, you know, trying just to see, you know, like you know, kind of like an emergency, you know, backup plan, and uh, it is possible to download your site into some sort of format. Um, you know, it might just be some sort of like, you know, comma space tab format. I don't know. Um, you know, because you know there are lots of categories and things. Uh, it is possible. I've never done it. Um, I've heard of it being done. Um, it's just kind of, it's the kind of thing where, you know, you would just have to, 
you know, research that. You know, put it on one of the things that you have to do you know, if you're going like, to you know, start a site. And Sarah, with your experience with Wikispaces, what is your um, policy on, on exporting people's data? Um, we, at Wikispaces, we allow you to back up all your data. Um, you can back it up in Wikitext, which is sort of the underlying code for the wiki. Uh, you can also back it up as HTML pages um, and uh, back it up I mean, as PDF. You can co uh, convert your content to PDF. So uh, we uh, do have an easy way for you to back up your data and move it if you need to do that. Um, if you're migrating over into Wikispaces, um, there's different things you can do. But if you can convert your content to HTML, we can get that fairly easily up onto a new wiki. So I also Sarah, I'd like to ask if you could explain briefly um, how it works with logging in and do people have to log in in order to change things? And can an administrator have rights? Um, you know, what are the administrator rights? And lastly, um, can you give one person rights to change one page but not another page? Is that uh, for me, Sarah? Yes, Sarah, please. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, so uh, can um, at Wikispaces, it depends on the wiki company, but I think a lot of them, if they have uh, different permission levels for your wiki, you can give people, uh, they need to log in. If you have a private wiki, they would need to log in in order to edit content. If you have a public wiki, they can just edit it without, without actually having, being a member of that wiki. Um, and then an administrator uh, on the wiki, We'll be able to either invite people in or grant them access in some way. Um, at Wikispaces, we have ability to, in terms of page permissions, ability to uh, grant people different levels of users access to different pages. Um, so you have, let's say, all your organizers. You want them to be able to edit a certain page, but you don't want members or the public to edit pages. You can you can grant that to them. Um, and then with our private label service, you can get into a very uh, uh, granular permission level. So you can have different pages, different wikis for uh, group A to work on, and then group B can, would have a different wiki, and all of that would be private. So there's, I think a lot of uh, wiki companies, there's, a, there's a, a way to handle the different levels of users you have, the different levels of access you want to have. Great. And um, we weren't able to spend too much time, or we haven't yet touched on this topic, and it is a big one, which is, Carol's question, how difficult was it to convince non-tech folks on the team to participate in the wiki? Uh, we could dedicate a whole hour just to that topic. But I do want to hear from the presenters on their, their experiences. And I'd like to start with David and then move to Beth. So David, if you could tell us like, how you were able to get people to start contributing and what challenges you had around non-technical people. Um, yeah, um, like I said, I, the non-technical people ranged from people who had never heard of Wikipedia to people who thought the internet was just a fad to people who were just like just go 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 and um, you know I, I pretty much had to convince people that uh, you know one if if the agency involved uh, was like their own agency that it served their purpose of like updating it like you know or there's a phone number or change of hours because these are people who are getting these phone calls like all day long anyway I mean why would you want to answer the same question over and over and over again if you can answer that question on a, on a website that you know, people are visiting quite a bit, and then you know, you could save yourself time. I mean, that's one of my arguments to government. I'm always trying to get government more involved. And I, I happen to know for a fact that a lot of government people spend a lot of their time answering the same questions over and over again. And we've tried to develop these you know, frequently asked question pages, you know, um, like how do you get into a shelter? How do you get you know, aid for veterans? You know, things like that. And so you know, the people who are the experts in that knowledge, I've, I've tried to you know, get them to sort of just like you know, give me something that I can like throw up there. It will save them time. You know, and so it's, it's that kind of you know, major addition to the site. But then there's also like the little stuff like, you know, look, you know, you're a social worker among 1,000 social workers in San Francisco. You know, if, if you see something on the site that you know, you know is different or updated, you know, please just click on the Edit button. You know, just, you know, it takes five seconds. It's just like editing a Word document. You just click Edit, make the change, hit Save. It's done. And everybody benefits from it. And Beth, did you have something you'd like to add? We can't hear you if you're muted. Okay, so I don't have Beth. I'm going to um, 
A lot of folks are asking about cost uh, of starting and maintaining, and we've been talking a little bit about that. So um, Sarah, could you give us a range of, from your experience on the different tools, like what's the range of cost um, for starting and maintaining a wiki? Um, it depends obviously on the, the uh, vendor you use and what you'd like to do with a wiki. Um, I think most, I'd imagine most wiki companies have a free version um, that you can check out uh, as you get started. Uh, wiki spaces, we range from free uh, to $50 a year if you want a private and customizable site to uh, $200 a year if you want custom permissions and more, more features. Uh, we also have our private local service is um, $1,000 um, a year for, per 100 users. So if you want unlimited wikis in your organization, there's that. So we have a range from, from free to up to an organization level. And I believe that um, different companies, obviously different companies will have different um, price ranges. Thank you. And I wanted to check if Beth had gotten her phone unmuted. Can you do a quick check, Beth? Yes, I, I think it's working now. I just, for some reason, it wouldn't let me unmute. So sorry about that. That's okay. I just wanted to see if you had anything to add uh, to the question about training and getting people to use the tool. Oh, I, and um, our consulting staff, even though we're a mixer of, of boomers and Xers, um, and though some people can find, are, are better with technology than others, um, we all value the use as a tool. So we were very fortunate that the five consultants were really big into, you know, this is a tool that will help our membership. So they were all buying in right from that first part of it. So it just made it a lot um, easier to uh, get everybody on board. And it also helps that wikis are very easy to use. Um, there's no code that you have to learn. It's very easily editable as, editable as we've talked about already. And it seems very intuitive. We didn't have to have any special training for us. So our training issues just weren't there um, for our consultants. Okay, great. And one last question, and um, this is, uh, and again, could be uh, you know talked about for a long time, but um, Richard is wondering, um, interested in tips for maintaining a logical structure and formatting while allowing large numbers of external contributors. So, and that's a question that I have as well. Is that you know how do you maintain a structure when people are adding in? And I'd like to have David answer this question. Well, um, something I haven't mentioned yet is the ability to protect pages. Um, there's a, a really tough decision that people have to make. You know, do you protect like your, your main page, for example? Uh, you'll notice that in the larger public wikis, the main page is protected. And what that means is um, only administrators can alter that page. Um, I think there may be some other options where you have to be at least a registered user to, up to, to make a change to that page. And, um, and that's the only page that we're really concerned about. Um, you know, as far as like keeping integrity in, intact, because I mean, theoretically, you know, somebody could come along and say like, "Hey, I don't like these community boxes anyway. Let's try circles." I don't know. You know, it would just be too confusing for people. I mean, we're we're still trying to, you know, sell this whole concept to the community, and I don't want people just all of a sudden just sort of like just change it and frighten people. I mean, it's been it's been hard work just to get people just to accept the wiki that I don't want there to be major changes. But I mean, whenever people have said like, "Hey, let's add this." I mean, I'll be like super quick to add it. Um, and then as far as all the other pages, you know, like I said, we have about 1,000 pages on SFMLS.net, and most of those pages are agency pages. And you know, some people add pictures. Some people add all sorts of like little menus. Um, you, know, you can do whatever you want to those pages I mean, as far as like making it look nicer. Um, it's just like you know, just that main page that, that again, it, it was a tough decision. And again, it kind of goes against the grain of that whole wiki philosophy I was talking about before. And it's, and it's frowned upon. Um, but again, um, there was sort of a higher, uh, higher purpose in that we, we are trying to, again, sell the community on something that's it's, it's, it's really a, SFMLS.net is a really special wiki in the sense that it's, it's really going into like unknown territory and trying to bridge government and nonprofits and the public together, um, kind of get out of that whole database mentality. So again, we, we decided to you know, make, make an exception on that. Great. Thank you, David, and to Beth and Sarah for presenting. That's all the time we have. I want to let you know I've got some links to resources in the PowerPoint that you'll get. And you'll also get these in the post-event um, message they'll send out.
there were way more questions that we didn't have time to answer. So please post those to our community forums, and we have volunteers watching to answer those questions. If you are new to TechSoup, we have more than just webinars. We have donated software, a lively community forum where you can post your questions, articles, and blog posts about technology-related topics. So please check out TechSoup.org and find out what we have to offer. We have got a couple great webinars coming up next week. We will be talking about Second Life and how nonprofits and libraries are using it to collaborate and connect. And the week following, Making It Easy to Give, uh, Taking Online Donations. So a broad overview of the different ways that you can take online, don online donations. And we'd like to thank ReadyTalk which has donated the use of their system to help TechSoup expand awareness of technology throughout the nonprofit sector. ReadyTalk helps nonprofits and libraries in the U.S. and Canada reach geographically dispersed areas and increase collaboration through their audio conferencing and web conferencing services. So we want to thank them. And thank everyone for attending today and hope you got some good information. Uh, please take a minute to fill out our post-event survey. I want to thank Becky and Sarah for answering chat questions and the presenters again. Thank you for all the time that you took to put this presentation together. Um, it was really great. So thanks again everyone. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Please stand by.